The global financial distress is evident. The federal debt has increased by $1.3 trillion in 12 months, according to data released by the U.S. Treasury. Today, the U.S. government is nearly $23 trillion in debt. Basically, we have been collectively enslaved, and we have been accountable to pay back all of that money with interest. By all means, at this stage, it is actually impossible for us ever to pay back all that debt. Not only that, but every year we even add another trillion dollars or so to the balance. The global elite is now retrieving more than $500 billion in interest from this debt year on year, and it is anticipated that number will significantly heighten in the years ahead. Corporate debt is at record highs standing at $10 trillion. Our debt is setting records in every aspect of the economy and contends. If we include all other forms of corporate debt not listed on the stock exchanges, that brings the total to $15.5 trillion, which is equivalent to 74% of GDP. Eventually, all of this debt will never be paid off. Rather, the bubble will just keep inflating until it unavoidably bursts. And when it finally bursts, say hello to a total meltdown. In fact, any time the debt exceeds about 80% or more of the GDP of any part of local, regional, or global society, it cannot be fixed except by total bankruptcy and a reset. So it goes without saying that there is a complete financial breakdown coming, and the question is, what will the reset be like? Will it be catastrophic or even survivable? The Fed believes the S&P is the economy. When only 1% has any holding of substantial value. The remaining 99% S401k are a joke. Working three jobs and wife has stage four with four kids. We just hit $23 trillion in debt, more than double since the last financial meltdown. We are stealing from future generations more than $100 million every single hour of every single day. This is a crime. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. The banksters have trapped themselves. In the old days, interest rates were lowered to encourage new borrowing because the Ponzi scheme requires ever-increasing banking activity to survive. The number now required to maintain the system is so big that only negative rates can sustain it. Think of the absurdity that the government could pay off its debt by issuing negative interest rates bonds. Of course, that makes no sense. The return to equilibrium, thus, is a return to making sense. That can't happen without a crash and reset of the system. Inflation will be tried first. 90% debt to GDP real not nominal is a red line we crossed probably in the Obama era. The US currently stands at about 106% nominal, so real is perhaps closer to 120%. Interest goes up inevitably. That law is locked in stone, so I would take advantage of the time left to unload. The World Bank came up with a figure of 77% as a maximum for sustainable growth, but most nations change the way they calculate GDP. Risky to take that number seriously. Too many untested theories. The US almost doubled the debt in the Bush-Obama era. It took 200 years to acquire the first half, so the combined global central bank decision to crash the system in a controlled manner was made probably in the Bernanke days. The best way to do this would be for some sort of alliance between allies towards a controlled import-export deal soon to be announced after 2020 Trump victory and Brexit. The lines are starting to be clear with a trade border between Eurasia and Anglo-America. The EU is in a rather precarious position right now. You could say between a rock and a hard place for if it splinters borders as history shows things can be quite volatile. Donald Trump and the Republicans are doing the same things as Obama and the Democrats did. Unbridled borrowing and spending like there is no tomorrow to keep us from falling into the economic abyss. No oversight to their wild expenditure as we can see with the impeachment hearings for an example. No one wants to bite the bullet and administer the economic pain that is waiting for us. As long as they continue this charade of economic fantasies, everyone is happy. We are like the Titanic sailing to that iceberg dead ahead and enjoying fake prosperity until we slam into reality. In addition to our looming corporate debt crisis, US consumers are $14 trillion in debt, state and local government debt levels are at record highs, and the US national debt just hit the $23 trillion mark. Pay close attention to the consumer debt figure. The national debt is bad, and it is one thing, but the consumer debt is going to rock everyone's world when it all goes bust. Remember what happens in a recession first of all. 
Jobs start disappearing, incomes start disappearing, and then bills do not get paid. When the federal government is broke beyond repair, and there are no allocations for states and local governments like there has been in the past, and these states and local county governments are already neck deep in debt themselves, it gets tight. As always, the consumer citizen gets the news tightened around their neck even more, as these local governments that had been receiving about a third of their revenue from their state and federal government, will now look to the citizens of each and every county, to pay more for services. Where do these counties get the second highest amount of their revenue? From the taxes, it collects on property owned by its citizens. The more you own, the more you pay. When the city and county revenues get cut by as much as a third, they will raise the property tax rates to compensate. Large homes with ample acreage will be hit the hardest, and then those newer homes all over the county, and especially those having to pay for services in the city such as water, sewer, and trash collection. All these things will cost more, and it will become unbearable for most citizens to pay. But pay they must as the leaders in these different levels of government, do not care about individuals. The debt will never be paid off. We can't even service or let's say pay the interest on the massive debt our wonderful men and women of Congress accumulated for all of us to pay. Both parties Republican and Democrats alike have jacked up our debt so much it will never be paid off. A significant reset is in order. In regard to the stock market. A broad topping pattern is what is evident. Signs of imminent downside, correction. From my observations this sideways chop is symptomatic of exhaustion. Combined with lower levels of liquidity, we could very well encounter a flash crash in the not too distant future. Stock investors better wake up and get over thinking about their stocks, as cash, stocks, are not money. They are paper certificates printed up by corporations and sold to you for Fed money that you will likely never see again. But the Fed money you gave to the corporations for their certificates does not disappear. It remains in the system. So when stocks go down, Fed money is not contracting or being destroyed. Only the imagined ability for you to get some Fed paper back has been destroyed. So when the stock market crashes by 90% this fall, the Fed's money supply remains unaffected and will be at same level or a higher level depending on QE. The rich are not going to get taxed to oblivion and then give campaign contributions to the party that forces them to pay more taxes. The middle class is drowning in debt because once you are in debt, you actually have to spend much, much less to get out of debt. Americans simply refuse to do that. They want the latest electronic toys. They want shiny new cars. They want it all, but they simply pretend that it's all free. Americans have no idea how to be frugal. I don't feel very sorry for most when their day of reckoning arrives. They had to know, in their heart of hearts, that the show can't go on forever. Either you deal with it, or you bury your head in the sand. Most Americans are completely ignorant about the one subject that everyone should study, money. They have no real assets, boatloads of liabilities, and even most of the middle class buy liabilities that they think are assets. It doesn't have to be this way, but it takes a little effort to educate yourself. And as long as the government taxes productive people to pay for unproductive people, then I will feel no sympathy for them. Prepare now or suffer the consequences. Simple as that. Eventually, this whole thing is going to come crashing down. This thing is not sustainable. Here in the United States, we are already in a manufacturing recession. We are already in a transportation recession. We're already in a corporate earnings recession. We are already in trouble. We are already seeing dozens of data points that an economic slowdown is already happening. This is what we will notice first. We will go into recession, and things are going to start getting bad, but beyond that. We are headed for the greatest depression. It's the perfect storm. We are talking about the breakdown of trade with China. We have witnessed the complete and total breakdown of relations between the United States and China. They, China, view us, America, as their primary global enemy. So, there is not going to be any kind of comprehensive trade agreement. And that has been one of the only things holding this stock market up. The system is failing. People that have faith in Wall Street, people that have confidence in Washington, people that have faith in the Federal Reserve and in the system, ultimately, they are going to be extremely, extremely disappointed. Most Americans are going to be blindsided by this, and most people have no idea what's coming, absolutely no idea. We're not just talking about Mad Max. We're not just talking about Armageddon. 
We're talking about the end of America. In the long term, if you want to prepare, you need to prepare for the collapse of America. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.